Welcome, welcome! It's my dog with the Texas Space Navy bringing you another Star Citizen video. And this video is getting out a little late today, but I hope you guys don't mind. Uh, you know, with work and personal stuff going on, it, you know, things getting a little backed up a little bit. I'm going to try to get things out a little sooner for you. But today I'm going to talk about the Star Citizen monthly report for August 2020. So they have gotten quite a bit done towards 311 that you'll see in this and some other things as well. Let's go ahead and dive in and take a look. I'm not going to read this word for word. I will read some parts of it for you and then uh, other parts. Uh, you, you know, you just check it out yourself and you'll be able to get the gist of it. So it starts with AI combat. So what they've done with AI combat is they're, they're still trying to implement those physical ammo boxes and those behaviors. Uh, for the AI to run back and pick up ammo, but they've also added it to where they'll swap weapons. And, you know, you've run out of ammo, it might be quicker to swap weapons than to change out the magazine, or maybe you're completely out of ammo and you need to just swap weapons so you can continue firing down range. They have added that to the AI combat. AI ships, they've worked a little bit more on accuracy for AI ships. In the past, they've only had two states, hit and miss, and more times than not, AI would miss. It was a little bit bugged, evidently. Now, what they're having is multiple states based on the skills that the AI possess. So this is something that might be interesting for NPCs in the future as well. So the way, the way they change it is not hit or miss anymore. They are actually making it to where uh, better AI can get the the cursor or the targeting cursor or crosshairs, whatever you want to call it, on target quicker. So the skill level of the AI will determine how fast they can move uh, the reticle to get it on target. And that will determine, you know, of course, if they can hit or miss. Uh, you know, obviously, if you're sitting still, you're an easier target. So defensive maneuvers will definitely help. I'm wondering how good the best AI will be. How fast will they be able to track? We'll have to wait and see, but uh, I mean, theoretically, they could track infinitely fast. Uh, but with the desync from the server to you know the player, who knows how that would actually turn out? So AI social, they're still working on bartenders. I'm gonna mostly skip over that. Uh, general work on AI. Uh, again, that's just stuff that they've kind of been working to uh, you know fix different movements and paths and uh, some of the logic on the back side. Uh, animation, you guys don't care about the animation right now. They're still working on how AI interacts with seats and bartenders and all of that stuff. Uh, art, art always has some fun stuff. You know, last month they were able to get Pyro 6 into white box uh, or into the complete stage. Um, Pyro 5 is now got its moons entered into production, which is, that means they're making some serious progress and they're starting to move on to moons. Uh, they're doing pretty good with Pyro, evidently. I, you know, the rumor was that they were going to do half of Pyro by December and the other half, you know, first quarter next year. Maybe they're moving so fast they get all of Pyro in. Well, again, that's something we'll have to wait and see. I'm interested to see that because they seem to be moving very quickly on Pyro. Um, as far as ships, this is what everybody's interested in right now. The Crusader Mercury has been being worked on in the U.S., at least for the final art. So it's still in final art, and it's some of the places inside the ship are already in flight-ready phase. So they've actually got quite a bit done. Uh, they've even moved into like the damage geometry and got it set up. Uh, they've done the passes for all of that to put it in flight ready phase uh, the additional detail that they're doing is on the interior rooms uh, dashboards uh, buttons that sort of thing and they will also work on like the power control and various systems uh, they're doing some stuff that probably won't see in game but it'll be ready when they actually get those systems online and running uh, so it's very cool that they're Pretty much, they're almost done with the Mercury Starrunner. And I did see a leak or a rumor saying that this ship would not be ready uh, by the time that 311 launches. Uh, 
because it was going to be pushed back to Q4. And then the leaker also said that Q4 is, could include October. Well, guess what? I don't think 3.11 is going to be released until October anyways. So let's just count on that being in. Something else that might be in that we won't necessarily count on, uh, it may be in 3.12, but it's the Cru Crusader Hercules. Uh, at least one iteration of it. It looks like they have been working on that in the UK and they've already got the habitation areas worked on. It's in final art. Uh, the lift and cargo systems made a lot of progress. Corridor connecting the bridge was completed and lockers, escape pods, and several component bays have all been completed on the Crusader Hercules. So we'll definitely see that before the end of the year. Will we see it before 312, like in 311, maybe. That would be really cool. That would be a great surprise to see. Uh, I think that would be awesome. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Would that be awesome to have the Hercules, or at least the first version of the Hercules, out in 311 along with the Mercury Star Runner? And which one would you fly mostly uh, in the verse right now? I know in the future that could change. Uh, Origin 100i series is now art complete and it's handed off to some of the other people to work on some of the other little things that it's going to need to be flight ready. Uh, the Asperia Talon is also in final art and it's receiving a detail pass. So that's really good news. Definitely going to see that one by 312. Uh, I doubt we'll see it in 311. Um, it's not the top priority, but it, it sounds to me like they have at least four teams working on ships right now. Uh, Crusader Mercury, Crusader Hercules, the 100i series, and the Asperia Talon. So great news. Uh, we should be seeing some new ships uh, very shortly in just the next couple of months. Uh, art team here for weapons. Uh, they've worked on a bearing shotgun and the GP33 grenade launcher, which everybody's been looking forward to that one as well. And they've also been working on automatic defense turrets. And, you know, missile racks, missile you know, systems, those type things, how they look. Uh, so that's pretty exciting if you're into the weapons, uh, FPS weapons, the ground installations, that sort of thing. Uh, very cool. They've also been working on the audio sounds for those guns. Uh, th then they have also been working on audio for planets. Uh, so they said that uh, Walla is going to have the sounds of crowds, like the, the rabble rabble you might get. Uh, not sure where that's coming from. I guess that's the way that sounds going through the atmosphere. I, I don't know. Uh, they've been doing some stuff with music. Uh, they've been redoing the way footsteps sound on different surfaces. So that'll be really great, especially for you FPS guys out there that, that really enjoy FPS. And maybe you'll be able to actually tell where somebody's coming from based off of the surface that they're walking on. Wouldn't that be neat? Uh, you know, if you go from wood to metal or something, you'll actually be able to say, oh, I know exactly where he's at. Uh, so very cool. Uh, team is also currently working on uh, feedback when player ships take damage. So like if a ship loses a wing or a thruster, you're going to hear what's happening to your ship. So that's pretty neat as well. Back in services. This is something that they are constantly working on. And uh, yeah, um, so they said that the wallet service was running super hot under load and they had to update the processor for that to uh, actually, you know, not be so overloaded. Um, they have most of the super cache finalized and uh, some reliability and optimization has to be done before, you know, that cache system gets put in. Uh, they have a meshed loadout service also uh, that they've been testing under load, and it's expected to be completed on schedule as well. So that's good news for some of the back-end stuff. And then low-level networking code was also finalized, so they're working on fixing some of the networking stuff. Um, this should help with a lot of the desync, and uh, you know they're trying to get that more in line and easier for everybody to uh, partake of the same game so that, you know, guys, AI aren't shooting you when they're looking the opposite direction or uh, you and uh, enemy ship when you're tangling in a dogfight 
you know, it looks like you're hitting him, but or you should be hitting him, but he's really, you know, 20 meters to your left. Uh, so it should help with some of that stuff that has been going on for a long time. Uh, they definitely need to continue work on that, and I know they will. Uh, characters, they so they've been working on some more NPC clothing, which you know they've always been working on that. They're continuing to work on a series of seasonal assets. So uh, some planets will go through different seasons, and uh, we should see some updates to some of those clothing and some new clothing based on that. Uh, the compu community team, of course, had the Where is Pico contest, uh, the roadmaps, Spectrum AMA, Ask Me Anything, uh, the you know the Foundation Festival, which created a bunch of guides and top guides, Best Crew in the Verse contest, and, of course, they put together a lot of the stuff for the Esprit Talon Q&A. Uh, engineering has been working, at least the physics engineering. There's engineering for systems, physics, and rendering. The physics, yeah, so they've been working on a lot of different things as well uh, just to make things act better or work better in the game. I don't want to go too much into that because now we're talking about stuff that's going to go over a lot of people's heads. And let's just say that what they're working on should help with a lot of, uh, I guess, physics, a lot of just a lot of different things inside the game, the way the game works. Now, the rendering part, they're working on the Gen 12 render uh, still. So that's good news. Um, they also started to look into the DirectX 11.1 API support. Um, yeah, they're, they're trying to fix some of the graphics stuff. And once this Gen 12 graphics and Vulcan get in, the game is going to look absolutely stunning. So you guys who are wanting to go out there and get the new NVIDIA cards that just came out, the 3000 series was announced. Um, yeah, this game is going to look absolutely smoking awesome uh, on one of those new cards once they get those systems in. We're still a little ways off, so don't expect that just yet. Probably next year when they implement Vulcan and Gen 12 at the earliest. Uh, so that's what I would say you can go and expect. So features. So last month, they were actually working on a bunch of critical bugs. Obviously, 3.10 launched, and it was not good. 3.10.1 came out, and it was still not good. So they had to work on a lot of, you know, the bugs and stuff that were causing 30Ks. Uh, they're also looking into the cargo hauling profession. Um, obviously, it is not as good as it was before, and some people say, well, that is intended. Some people say, well, it's a nerf. Um, it, it doesn't matter. They're working on it. It's all going to be part of balance, but they're also going to get more sophisticated with cargo hauling because they're going to have the cargo decks come out. So expect some stuff, uh, you know, where you have to deal with that. They're also going to have cargo that relies on temperature, uh, cargo that relies on stability. So like, it, you know, volatile cargo, like maybe you're moving quantanium that's been re refined a little bit, but it's still volatile. Uh, so you're going to have to kind of fly a little more casually or safer, I guess you'd say, conservatively, maybe it's a better word, and uh, make sure you're putting those landings down nice and easy, maybe using the auto landing feature. Um, then they have features for the vehicle teams. They are still working on stuff like ladders, doors, elevators, all the entrances and stuff. They're working on docking. Really can't wait for them to get docking in. Then we're going to start seeing those uh, Andromedas work a lot better. Then we may actually see a little bit closer time to getting Idris, Javelin in play. It's those bigger ships, the whole sea. That one's been done. I, I, it's been done on the roadmap for a long time. And they said that the physics grids weren't exactly right, but it still says done. Uh, if you look at the Squadron 42 roadmap, it's done. They just don't have docking in, and uh, I'm guessing they're still trying to figure out how we're going to unload that cargo and load it onto that ship. Uh, so that stuff's being worked on. Uh, again, graphics is Gen 12, level design. Um, they're still working on rest stops. Uh, Orison is still progressing. They're still working on it. It is now into Graybox, so that's really good news. We should see it by the end of the year. 
lighting of course they're always going to be doing different things for lighting they improved you know area 18 with the 310 patch um, they had to work on grim hex with some of the lighting and stuff uh, so they're definitely working on that and the cargo decks are going to be working on the lighting for all the cargo decks and refinery decks coming up as well the narrative team has been working on the Imperator election. We knew that they would be doing that at the end of last year, and they've been doing that all of this year so far. So, uh, you know, if that's something that interests you with the next Imperator and voting on it, um, you may be able to impact the entire uh, vote for that, you, you know, but they said really the story is going to dictate it, and we're just going to feel like we're part of uh, the story. So, in other words, if predominantly the community wants one candidate selected as the imperator but they the story team's already selected one that's going to be the imperator they may say well this candidate gave it a big push uh, they had a late uh, you know push and they're disputing the elections or something along those lines they'll have a, some sort of cool storyline to go with it uh, that they can make up for it but we will actually feel like we're part of the process even though we're not completely shaping the story of star citizen at the moment uh, player relations, <laughs> oh, do we need to talk about that? They've had uh, 93,000 ships being returned to player accounts uh, because people lost ships with the persistence bugs. 93,000. That, that's a lot of in-game bought ships, and they're still working on it as well. Uh, I know I've lost a ton of armor, a ton of weapons, and even a few components. Uh, I hope that I you know I don't care if those come back because I know there's going to be a wipe, uh, you know. But it would be cool if they're bringing stuff back. Well, you know, hook a brother up. You know, help me out. Uh, props. So they're working on the cargo deck props. Uh, you know, they're always adding some things to these new uh, areas that they're working on. So really cool that they have some, some pictures of some of these props. These are pretty neat. Uh, I like I like these. Um, I guess they kind of glow in the dark type props. Those are really cool. Q&A, uh, they're of course always working on the issues. Uh, Sox updated something as well. So yeah, they're still working on object container streaming. I know they put it in earlier this year or whatever, but it's still not completely implemented. And it won't be really until we get iCache. So uh, they will continue working on Sox. That's just something they're, they're going to have to do. Turbulent has been hard at work, even though it's hard to notice that because we don't really see much of it. But they're working on a notification system in game. Uh, they're going to iterate on where it is right now. Of course, right now, most of the time when you get you know a friend invite or accept something or whatever, it gives you multiple or duplicates. They definitely got to clean that up. They're also working on uh, back end architecture to help facilitate the uh, high player concurrency on game servers so more people being on a server they're trying to work on some of the back end stuff to support larger numbers of people playing at one time uh, they're also working on helping new developers come on board so i guess they have some sort of website or system or whatever to get people more familiar with the project um, that's kind of what they're working on there and turbulent also helped with the rock and the talon pages and setting those all up uh, user interface they are obviously continuing to work on that for the pu and the squadron 42 they're working on uh, external inventories personal inner thought systems you know elevator panels are still being that's something that was pushed off but that's something that's still on there um, the, yeah, they've got all sorts of different things that they've been working on for UI. Some things have taken precedent over others, and my guess is that the elevator team was, or the team that was working on that, the UI team, was taken off because there was a more immediate need for Squadron 42, most likely. Uh, so that's probably why we didn't see uh, the elevator panels in this last patch, and we won't see it probably for a while. Uh, VFX. Of course, they're working on capital ship improvements, uh, the way gradual damage reads across the entire hull of the ship, and they continue to work on uh, the different types of hazards, you know, like fire hazards and shields, how shields look, uh, just all those sorts of different things, player health, um, all of that, quantum travel, VFX, they're working on all that stuff for sure. So, really cool that they have 
this monthly report out every month. You can catch it on the website. Hopefully you guys liked my take on it. I didn't read it word for word for you guys, but I wanted to bring some of this stuff to you. Um, I definitely appreciate all you guys who have been tuning in. You guys rock. Uh, I Definitely, if you want to support my channel, uh, please look at my Patreon and my YouTube members. Uh, that information is going to be in the description of the video. If you can't support the channel in that way and you want to support it in another way where you don't have to give money um, which you know understand times are tough uh, I do appreciate everybody that does give money thank you so much I really want to make this a full-time career for me um, and I can't do that without you guys so thank you for the support uh, for you guys who can't give the money or don't want to or whatever you can and still you want to support the channel you can do that by watching all the the uh, ads throughout the video and clicking on the ads which will take you to the website where the ads are you don't have to buy anything there uh, but when you watch the ads all the way through or click on the ads that helps the monetization of the channel that helps bring in ad revenue so i definitely appreciate you guys that are doing that thank you so much if you're interested in joining my org it is texas that information is in the description of the video as well and we will take anybody in as long as you're cool and uh, you want to play with a bunch of folks, good folks. I've got a great group, a great org. Uh, the people are what make this org so great. And I think, you know, anybody coming in and, and getting to know a few of them, you're going to enjoy your time here. Uh, so definitely check that out. If you're new to the game, maybe you've never played before, you're thinking about getting the game, I also have a little uh, referral code down below in the description as well. If you use that referral code, you get 5,000 bonus UEC and which is starting credits and uh yeah uh, you know that helps you helps me and you know that's great so without any further ado i'm mud dog with the texas space navy and i'll see you out in the verse